a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, Fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments which I command you all the days of your life that your days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your hearts. The word of the Lord. Wimbo wakatikati, kitikio, we buwana nguvu zangu na kupenda sana. 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 Hey, boy. 
second reading a reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 23 to 28 he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever a reading from the letter to the Hebrews brethren the priest of the former covenant were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Christ holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who draw near to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, unstained, separated from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily. First for his own sins, then for those of the people. He did this once all when he offered up himself. Indeed, the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. We love him. We will come to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> shall love the Lord your God, you shall love your neighbor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 12, verses 28b to 34. At that time, one of the scribes came up to Jesus and asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel. 
The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's first reading from the book of Deuteronomy follows a long sequence where Moses reminds the Israelites of the commandments, that is, the Ten Commandments, which they had undertaken to observe as the covenant people of God. Faithful observance of these commandments will be a path to life in the land they are about to enter. The actual text for today's reading became the Shema, the prayer that every devout Jew recites each morning on rising. The opening word, Shema, means listen. It also has the sense of obey. The prayer is a daily reminder, not only of the covenant obligations, but also of the privilege from which these obligations flow. Israel is a people addressed by God, called each day to listen and to obey. We too are in the same category, called by God himself to listen and to obey on a daily basis. The Pontifical Biblical Commission in its 1993 document, that is the interpretation of the Bible in the church, picked up this motif describing the local Christian community as one, I quote, which knows that it is addressed by God, a community that listens eagerly to the word with faith, love, and docility. This is the wider context of the supreme commandment to love the Lord and to love him alone with all our heart and with all our souls and with all our might. In this sense then, love has the sense of cleaving to God to the exclusion of all other objects of worship. Heart, soul, 
and strength refers not so much to separate capacities, but together communicate a loving commitment that engages a totality of a person, including, especially from um, strength, one's talents, and capacity for action, perhaps even one's possession. The corresponding command to love one's neighbor as myself also occurs in the Old Testament. You may want to read Leviticus 19, uh, chapter 18, bringing the two commandments, love of God and love of the neighbor. Together, as Jesus does in the episode that forms today's gospel. This seems to have been something distinctive of his teaching and ministry. Though Jewish parallels are not lacking from a later period. Now, scribes are usually hostile figures in the gospel. The one who approaches Jesus in this scene seems to do so as a genuine, genuine inquirer. The question he raises, which commandment of the Torah is the first? This was a standard item of discussion among the rabbis. So it is actually not a misplaced question. And that is why, uh, looking at it, we may want to call this person very genuine and honest. He is then seeking the opinion of this controversial teacher on this matter, that of course, the matter that has occupied their debate for days on end. In today's gospel, Jesus is once again in dialogue with a lawyer. But usually, this meeting is a positive experience for both. Most of his interactions with lawyers were confrontational. But they were trying to catch him out or use his words against him. But he was always able for them, and he would always see their intentions long before. But in the gospel of today... We have a lawyer who wants to do his best. And he asked Jesus, which commandment is first of all? He wants to get it very clear because he, want, he, he does not only want to do the right thing, he wants to do it right. Doing the right thing and doing it in the right way. Jesus answers him with the two commandments, repeating what we heard in the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. But Jesus quickly adds the second commandment. You must love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says, there is no greater commandment than these two. They are two sides of the same coin, so to speak. The lawyer agrees with Jesus. In response, Jesus tells him that he is not far from the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. This man is on the race, but he is not far. <clears throat> having, having said that uh, he has observed and he knows, Jesus tells him that, yes, you've been doing very well, but uh, you are not very far. Now, what does this mean? This lawyer is nearly there, but not yet. It's like a marathon runner. They are approaching the finishing line and they just need that 
extra kick. That extra kick of energy to get them over to the finish line. There is something that is remaining. And we may be there too, trying our best. But there is an extra kick to get us to the finish line. Many are the times that uh, we have seen the runners almost collapse before they finish. And you may have noted, those of you who are uh, fans of athletics, that uh, when the runners are doing the last lap, the cheering goes up. Why? Because even, even the, 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 the cheerers, they know that it is possible to give up at that point. It is the moment that the energy wanes out, and it is the time that all of them will need that extra kick. The lawyer is almost at the finish line, but he is not there, though he is close. So, how can this man get to the finish line? In fact, that is the question that we need to ask today. Today we can talk about so many things. I know we can talk about obedience to the commandment, we can talk about love of neighbor, we can talk about love of God, all that is very, very important. But there is a very strong message that would be hidden that uh, I would not want us to miss it. Because I want us to be this lawyer who is doing well, but not there yet. He has done well up to that point. So, who does this lawyer need to get over to the line? And I can tell you today, what the lawyer needs to get to the finish line, it is what each one of us needs to get to the finish line in this race of life. We are in this race we are not alone. We are doing well so far. Today is a very encouraging Sunday. We are all doing very well. But we are not there yet. Do we need something? Yes. I mean, do we need to get to the finish line? Yes. How must we get there? There is something that we also need to add. That we need to get there strong. But are we there? No. Do we need something? Yes. What is, this, is it that we need? And I have said, what this lawyer needs to get to the finish line, it is what each one of us needs to get to the finish line. So, what do we need to get to the finish line in this marathon? Number one, make your refuge in God. When life gets hard, where you where do you go? Just ask this question. When things are so hard, where do we go? Where do we find our comfort? When we have hit the hard wall. When we have hit the rock bottom. And then the question is, how many times that when we are so stressed that we remember the first thing is prayer or the word of God? I have heard people say, you know, Father, I have tried everything. Now I'm only left with the prayers. Then you may want to ask, what was everything? So today we are being told that when things are hard, we turn to prayer. You know, often the reason we are stressed out is because we overstretch our abilities and our time. We become exhausted. And at that point, escapism becomes real. The problem is in what we choose to escape. Uh -huh. Making our refuge in God, we will set the tone to finish strong. Remember, this is not our race. It is his. He is the one who called the names. And then he is telling us, my daughters, my sons, you are doing well. But we are not there yet. We want to get there. 
Some of us need that extra kick to be able to run, and when we get there, we don't get there and collapse. No. We want to get there and celebrate because that is the essence of Christian living. So we must get there and finish very strong. Number two, make your requests to God alone. You know, the book of Psalm uh, asked God to fill him with the praise as the, start, the starting thing and also his presence. You know, we look around and uh, some days find it so very hard to praise God. Sometimes we ask, what is there to praise God? There is a lot because God is not dead. We praise him even at death. We praise him even when there is sickness. We praise him when, even when nothing is happening in our lives. You know why? Because God is aware. Nothing to God is breaking news. God has not forgotten us. We have walked, we have walked this journey and we are walking with him. Please never walk away. Walk with him. He has never neglected us. We have not been abandoned. For those whose faith remains, we must balance the pressure with the praise of the Most High. We balance the pressure of life with the praise. Ask God to fill you with the praise, even when there is tears all around you. Think where you are in a, in a funeral. Maybe you are a guest in a funeral. And everybody around you is crying and wailing loud. There comes a time in life when things are exactly like that. Left, wailing. Right, wailing. North, wailing. South, wailing. Everywhere. Until you ask God, what have I done to you? There is nothing you have done to God. Even at that point, when everybody is waiting, tell God, please fill my mouth with the praise. Please fill my life with your presence. Two things. When nothing is working, when everybody is writing you off, Tell God, please, fill my mouth with the praise. Fill my life with your presence. Number three, find your resolve in God. This is strong. You know, choosing to have a mood which reflects God's presence is very important. We always say that the attitude you have is the one you choose to have. Attitudes are not things that happen to us. Attitudes we choose. The attitude you have is the one you choose to have. Surrounding circumstances and people can affect your demeanor, but the attitude you reveal is your responsibility. Uh -huh. The attitude that you reveal Whenever everything is going maybe wrong, that is your responsibility. And you cannot, you can't blame God for the attitude you have. Neither can you blame others for the same attitude. Find your resolve in God to give you peace and joy, even in pain and tragedy. Resolve to live in God's peace. Resolve to act on what you know of God and what you have experienced through the journey you have taken with God. Let me ask you, if today you are living in desolation and dejection and you are feeling like you are just a failure, would you categorically say that there has never been success in your life? Would you categorically say that God has never done anything in your life? Sometimes we forget that. There is nothing in this world that can compare with God. Nothing. Number four, often reflect on God. Often 
reflect on God. Look back on life with an eye for God's hand and feel your spirit and strength and with the, with the, we say that uh, feel your spirit with the, with, the, with the words that helps your final kick. The words that strengthens you for the finish kick. What does that mean? When we reflect on God, we use the words that he can use in us. God cannot call you a failure. God cannot call you a thief. God cannot call you the names that the world calls you. God will always call you by your name. So when we reflect on God, even everything about him fills our lives. When we speak, we speak his words. When we think, we think his spirit. When we act, we act like him. At that point, do we even need to talk about giving up? No. Because when we speak, we speak life. I've always said, allow your lips to always speak victory, not defeat. God has never seen any defeat in us. And he knows for a fact that all of us will get at the finish line. But it is all upon us what we choose to, to believe and the attitude we want to carry along as we move. Number five, rejoice because of God. Even when we face troubles and grief, because pain will come, tragedies will come, frustrations will come, betrayals will come, all of them, all the negativities will happen. But there is one thing that will always be there. God will always be there. And our, our, our life can only be better with him. Number five, rejoice because of God. Number six, avoid flip flopping to get to the finish line. This I want to talk, and I want to speak especially to our gracious women. Flip-flopping, the other word is ecclesiastical tourism. Jumping from one church to the other. I have heard people say, since my husband died, I didn't go to that, I don't go to that church again because I feel as if they didn't support me. Since I lost my child, I've never gone to that church again because uh, they never supported me. And since then, the same fellow has been to nine churches. Nine. The others, they jump from one to the other because they feel that this church has no Holy Spirit. Then you go to the church that manufactures. Then when you get there, then there is another trouble. People are seeing you with another eye. Then you realize, the spirit I thought it is here, this is a Chinese spirit. Why is it genuine? Then you go to another church. Then there, you just find they are in the season of corrections. And you and giving have never been friends. You are just a stingy soul. Then you start accusing them, hey, this church, everything is money. Allah! How do they operate without money? Then you jump to the other one. When you jump to the other one, then they want to make you a leader. Then you realize you have no brains. Hey! Then you have to run where people will accept you with your, <laughs> with your limited brain. <laughs> then you get to another church. Then they want to make you an intercessor. Then you realize that you have no spirit. Ah, yeah. So we have a problem now. You are keeping on jumping and jumping because you think a certain church will take you to the finish line. Gracious ladies, for those of you who are jumping from one church to the other, there is no church in this world that can take you to the finish line if you have no relationship one-on-one -on -one with Christ, even if you jump to a thousand and one churches, you are doing zero work. A good number of us have gotten lost, flip-flopping, jumping from one church to the other, 
thinking that that church could be better than the other one. When we get there, the reality dawns on us that I have the problem. I have the problem. Jumping can't help. In fact, let me tell you, when I gave a reflection, maybe you can get on YouTube, 10 things that will not matter in heaven. Were they 10 or 12? Let me put it this way. Things that will never matter in heaven. One of them is the church you are attending. Yet we are fighting because of the churches. We are jumping from one to the other to the other. The church, I want to say this for a million times, the church you attend will not take you to the finish line. It is your faith and the relationship you have with your Redeemer. Don't be misguided. Don't be. Never listen to anybody who tells you that in this church, it is the only church people can go to heaven. No. No. No, please. No, 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 no. Number seven. See trials as an opportunity to get to the finish line. Today I want to tell you some good news. The trials we go through in life are supposed to help us, to help us to get to the finish line. If we are not going through difficulties, then chances are we might get stuck. Why? Because we'll be comfortable. And when we are comfortable, we don't seek God. So when you are in crisis, when everybody is against you, when everybody is talking ill of you, please don't forget you are in a race. A race and your name was called by God. Not to those who are distracting you. Our problem comes when our ears are focused on those who distract us as opposed to what God is saying about us. He is telling you, my daughter, you are strong. You can move. But somebody is calling you a witch. Another one is calling you a con, a con woman. Another one is calling you a prostitute. Another one is calling you a drunkard. Another one is calling you whatever you are being called. But then you start looking back and then you asking, what are they seeing in me? My dear, at that point you have missed it. My dear brothers, the same. God is calling you and he's saying, my son, I know you can get to the end. Do not listen to the, those distracting you. There are so many naysayers, men and the women who will say that you are never meant to be and listen to them. When you are in those difficult situations, always know that I'm getting there. I know I can hear the voices of those who are saying that I was never meant to be. I can hear them saying this and the other one. I can hear them discrediting our family that for us, we are never meant to, to get anywhere. But you have to know that your focus is where you are going at the finish line. So every time, even when, you are, even when the, the veracity mm -hmm, and even when the intensity of the insult and negativity and the toxicity rises, keep on, keep on, keep on jumping, eh? knowing that I am headed somewhere and I'm going there. I know I will finish strong. This race, I was called by God, not by people. Number eight, do not quit to get to the finish line. We cannot get there by quitting. Did we say there will be problems? Yes, we said that. There will always be problems. But what we didn't know is that these problems come to aid us to get to the finish line. So if today you are in deep crisis, deep crisis, you are being reminded, my son, my daughter, you are doing very well, but you are almost there. You need something. And what do you need? Not to give up. Do not give up. We are getting there. We are getting there. Even when you are second guessing your, your life, maybe you could be asking, was I meant for marriage? Yes, my dear, you are meant for marriage. Was I meant for priesthood? You are meant for priesthood. Please don't listen to the sound of crisis. Please don't listen to the sound of haters. Please don't listen to those who are doubting you. you are, was I meant for sisterhood? Yes, you are meant, my dear. 
Was I meant for brotherhood? Yes, you were meant. Remember, God never makes mistakes. God cannot give you a vocation by accident. He knew you can get to the finish line. And if today I, I get out of priesthood, it is not because God made a mistake. It is because I misused the gift. It is as simple as that. Maybe I listened to the, to the sound of the crisis I was in. And then I said, maybe, maybe God never called me to be a priest. He called me. But there were people also shouting. Remember during this race, names are called in every race in this world. But in the race of life, your name, as it is known, is called out by God. He who called the, out that name is the one who gives you the strength to run and even the strength of the final kick. Number nine, lay aside every weight. Another problem that we are having to get there is because we want to get the finish line, but we are carrying loads and loads of problems. Guilt, past past failures, unforgiven, un, unforg unforgiveness, pains that have never subsided, and so many things. Our shoulders are heavy. And if you pile, if you pile the load, and you try to run, you cannot at some point, whatever it is that you have, will weigh, will, will weigh you down. We wear you down, and you get down, and you cannot run. And then you will say, oh, she almost finished. He almost finished. But he was carrying a lot. Dear good people, what is this that is making your body so tired? What is it? Today, you must lay it aside. Maybe you feel as if that you are so frustrated Maybe you, are be, you feel that the betrayals in your life are so painful. Maybe the past pains, somebody who injured you and you have never forgiven the fellow. Maybe you are broken marriage or you are breaking marriage. Maybe you are broken relationship. And maybe it's a huge load. And you are saying, today I cannot hear what God is saying because the pain in this marriage is so excruciating. The pain in this breaking or broken relationship, it is so excruciating. Dear good people, please lay aside all those. They are not needed for the final kick. Please. None of the loads that we are carrying is needed for the final kick. None of them. We only need two things, which are not even heavy. Praise and the presence of God. How I love that. And finally, number 10, run with patience. This is not your race. This is the race of God. It needs a lot of patience because there will be so many, um, how do we call them? Uh, we call them uh, false starts. There will be so many false starts. And sometimes so many detours, so many of them, they will come. But please be patient. Maybe you are running so well, until your son became a prodigal child. He got into drugs. That was a detour. You started now doubting God. You started going to everybody apart from God. Maybe you were doing so very well until when your marriage hit the rock. At that point, you don't even go to church. You don't go for prayers. You're just there. You lie to yourself that you have become a YouTuber. YouTube has no section for tears. But you can create one if you want. You can create an account in YouTube where you can be recording your tears. But remember, our tears are not meant for YouTube. Our tears are meant for the feet of Jesus. That's why we deposit them. We don't go to deposit our tears in YouTube. We don't go to deposit our tears in some groupings of men and women because the best they can do, they will laugh at you. You may think that is breaking news, telling people that, you know, my marriage is breaking, you know, my husband cheated on me. 
And some people will say, aha, we knew her. Right from the beginning. We knew she would never make it in marriage. And maybe you are going to them for sympathy. To feel that now you, you did everything well, your marriage did not work. No. When you go to people, there are those who speak ill of you. And they'll make you even feel even worse. And some will even tell you. They'll tell somebody whom they are sure will tell you. Ah, we knew she can't make it. Ah, we knew, we knew. From the beginning, ah, we knew that marriage cannot even last. Ah, we knew him. This man, this man never keeps women. We knew that. Let him not tell us that, that he married a, a Jezebel. No. There are some people, even if they marry from heaven, one of the angels. So, and then you're telling us, you see now, uh, you come, uh, and the, I, didn't, I didn't know misery, misery likes company. So now you have, you have now a whole subgroup of all those marriages have broken. That's a useless gathering. Useless gathering. Later, maybe we, we, we always say in, in, uh, in counseling that uh, you, you need support groups. Support groups are not people who are crying like you. We cannot have a whole subgroup of waiters. No, waiters cannot go anywhere. Because you all know when you are crying, your eyes cannot see properly. So when you are crying, you are, you are just like a blind man. When you are crying, you are like a, a blind woman. So when you come into a group, it is even worse. Because you become obstruction to one another. At the end of the day, you start eating each other up. Even if you so, we have to ask ourselves, where are we going? Yes, when there is a lot of tears at the feet of Jesus. I have always told you in the past, he is the only one who knows the language of our tears. When there is a lot of pain, we don't run away from God. Listen here. God uses you right where you are. And so, learning to be patient is a must. God will use you where you are. Even when you ask, is there something wrong with us? Have, is our life jinxed? It's about God. So, get ready. Be steady. Don't give up. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Remember, finishing well is getting to the end, not almost. We can't be like that lawyer. We must get to the end. We are doing well, but you know what? we are not there yet. But we are saying, finishing well is getting to the end and keeping our faith. We have our heart guarded, keeping our focus, pressing on, and eagerly waiting for the return of God. Finishing well is getting to the end and you have kept your faith, you have guarded your heart, you have kept your focus, you are pressing on, you eagerly desire his return. Dear good people, may your finish be strong and glorious. Thank you.